is Chris of Light and Joy Designs and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this really pretty lacy shawl called the Ocean Wave Shawl. This is a pattern that comes from my vault so to speak and I'm bringing it into the uh, Crochet Magical Mystery Tour so that more people can enjoy it and make it. This pattern um, What's, there's many cool things about this pattern. Um, one is that it's so versatile you can use it with any kind of yarn. I'm going to be showing you how to make it in a lace weight yarn, <clears throat> but you could certainly make this um, <clears throat> all the way up to a bulky weight yarn and it would be beautiful and it's easy to customize the size. It is a rectangle, um, so it's uh, you know, very easy to change your size on it. <clears throat> um, the, the one that I'm showing you here was made in It's a Wrap Rainbow Yarn in the colorway Nautical. It's 623 yards. Uh, the yarn is from Red Heart. And um, let me just show you some pictures here of the different ways it can be styled. Here it is um, hanging up. It's, as you can see, it's a rectangle. Um, but you can wear it kind of as a scarf. You can wear it um, as kind of like a ruana. You can style it in this cool way. Um, you know, you can wear it, you could um, lace it up on the side and wear it as a poncho. There's a lot of different things that you could do with this. Uh, shawl because it's got it's got all these lace edging so it's perfect for um, you know lacing one end up to the other if you wanted to like for instance you could make it into uh, a little bit of a like a shrug where you would lace the top edge to the bottom edge for a portion of it and then leave this portion open here and then lace this edge over here, and it would be kind of like a nice little summer shrug. Um, there's a lot of, so there's a lot of different things you can do, and all you have to do is, for the lacing, is just uh, make a chain. Um, at the end of this video, I'll have some information on styling it, some uh, photos, and maybe some video footage on uh, modeling it. So, um, if you want to make it in a lace weight, as I said, I used It's a Wrap Rainbow Yarn. Today I'm going to be using, for the demonstration, I'm going to be using It's a Wrap Sprinkles Yarn. And this colorway is called Cupcake. So it's a really pretty, um, you know, blues and some purples and greens in there. Uh, but some other ones that could be good would be um, Lion Brand has uh, a yarn called Ombre Life. And those are each somewhere around 400 yards. So you could use two of those to make about the same size. Uh, another good one is this one here called Twirls by Cotton Kings. This is available through Hobby.com, H-O-B-B-I-I.com. And they have some really fantastic uh, colorways. This one is uh, colorway number 40. I don't know if it has a name, but that's the, that's the number for it. That would make a nice one. This is 800 yards. Um, this, the, this is 100% cotton. And all of these are plied yarns. So it's the ones that I'm working with today have four strands to them, you know, and it's, it's not twirled. It's just, they just lay next to each other. I'll show you here on this one. You can see that there is four strands and that's how they create the color changes is every so often they'll change one of these strands to a different color and you get this beautiful 
gradation of color. Um, here's another version of It's a Wrap Sprinkles. This could make a nice version as well. And this colorway is Plum Pudding. And I'll uh, discuss how what it's like to work with these yarns when I begin the tutorial. Um, as far as the size of this, this shawl, um, because it's a lace, it can stretch out a lot in the two different ways. So when it's just laid flat and it's at a, what I would call like a relaxed, um, you know, when it's laid on the floor, let's say, the measurements are 54 inches across and 22 inches from top to bottom. Um, but when you, if you stretch it out all the way this way, the depth can be as short as 15 inches. And if you stretch it out all the way this way, the depth can be as long as 35 inches. So it's kind of, um, it's the fun thing about that is that for styling it, it you can shape it in a lot of different ways. So, um, and then one last thing about the the neatness of this pattern is that you could make this pattern in any weight yarn. Um, it's fantastic with these color changing yarns. Um, you could make it in, you know, sport weight, DK, worsted weight, all the way up to a bulky weight yarn, I think would make a really cool wrap in this pattern as well. All right, so let's go and take a look at the other materials we will need. For this project, you are going to need some yarn. If you want to make it the same as mine, you'll use It's a Wrap from Red Heart or a similar yarn. I'm using It's a Wrap Sprinkles in the colorway Cupcake. Um, but you can also use, as I mentioned before, uh, the Ombre Life from Lion Brand or um, the Twirls from Cotton Kings. These are on hobby.com. There's one that's uh, number 40. How pretty is that? Um, I'll show you two more that I have. This one is number 33. This actually looks better in person than on camera, <laughs> like myself. <laughs> um, this one is also twirls, and this is 43. This is a really cool color, color way. Um, so in addition to that, if you're using this kind of plied yarn, um, I'm going to be using a J hook. You'll want a uh, yarn needle for sewing in your ends. It's always good to have a, a stitch marker or two. You never know when you might need one. You're going to need a measuring tape to figure out how long you want yours to be and a scissors. All right, so here we are with the pattern and you can find um, the uh, free version on my website or if you want to get the uh, printable version without any ads and you want to support my work, um, my patterns are very inexpensive. I keep the price very low. Um, you can order it on either Ravelry or Etsy and I'll have links in the description below. So for this shawl, as I mentioned, um, at its most relaxed uh, state, I don't know if that's really a term or not, but without it being stretched one way or the other, it's about 54 inches wide and 22 inches tall. Um, and so it uses uh, 623 yards of this plied yarn 
and um, you can make yours any size you want and you can make it in any yarn you want. If you're going to make it in a different yarn than I'm making it in, you're going to want your uh, stitch count to be multiples of 12 plus. Okay, so for mine, I'm going to be making the same size as my first shawl, uh, 54 inches across, and that's going to uh, be a starting chain of 168, that's our multiple of 12, plus 2 is 170 chains to start. If you, I'm going to be using uh, Red Heart, it's a rain, sorry, Red Heart, it's a wrap, um, I'm going to be using the sprinkles version and it's the same weight as this uh, one that I used for the blue one. If you are going to make yours uh, in another weight yarn, you'll just want to check your gauge, make a, make a little swatch and uh, to see what size you want to uh, make your shawl. Uh, but if you're making the same size as mine, you'll end up with a total of 13 of the fans uh, plus two half fans on either of the two ends. And you'll see that as we go along. So to start, we're going to start with the 170 chains. So to begin, we're going to start with a slip stitch. This is my tail end and this is my working yarn end. I just like to cross it over like that and then I just pull the yarn up through that loop. There's a lot of different ways to make a slip stitch and I have a little shorts video on how to do that with a couple of different ways. So to make a chain, we're just going to yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook and I'll just be doing that 170 times. If you want to use the foundation double crochet method, what you will do, um, and what that is, is you make the starting chain and the first row of double crochets all at the same time. Um, because our first row is just all double crochets in each of the chains. So if you wanted to do that, then you would um, start with a chain three, you yarn over, go into that first chain, yarn over and pull through a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. You're going to chain one and that's your first chain and then you're going to finish the double crochet as normal. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. To make the next stitch, you're going to yarn over, go into that chain you just made by going under those two threads, yarn over, pull through a loop. You're going to chain one. That makes that second chain of your foundation chain and then finish up your double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You'll just continue like that until you have, uh, in this case, it would just be a multiple of 12 if you're using foundation crochet. So in the end, I'll just have a total of a 168 uh, total double crochets. So again, to do the next one, yarn over, we're going to go under those that V there, those two threads. Oops. Yarn over, pull through a loop, chain one, and then finish the double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And just keep going like that. This makes a little bit looser uh, starting chain if you do it this way, but you get it all done in, in one go. So, but I'm going to do it the regular way with the, um, 
with the starting chain since most of you will probably be doing it that way. Uh, and when I get to the end, I will show you how we start row one. For the next step, we are going to do a double crochet in each chain across this row of chains. And we're going to start in the third chain. So the loop on your hook is not a chain. So let's count the chains. One, two, three. To do a double crochet, you're going to yarn over and you're going to go into one or two loops of that chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over, going to go into the next chain. You can see this is, it kind of pulls it a little bit. So here's our next one. Then we yarn over and pull up a loop, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now working with this type of yarn just takes a little bit of getting used to because it is very lightweight. Um, and because I'm making a lace shawl, I'm using a larger hook than if you want this to be a, a dense fabric. In that case, you'd want to use more like a 3.5 millimeter hook for this type of yarn. So when you're working with um, plied yarn with the, the strands that are not, not twirled, um, at first you may find that your hook um, gets caught on one or more of those plies as you're pulling through. But if you just stick with it for a short little while, you will adjust to it. And you find that way for pulling the hook through so that it doesn't get caught. And just like when you switch from any yarn to another yarn, you adjust to working with the feel of that yarn. And this type of yarn is no different. Um, there's some people who say it's really hard to work with this yarn, but um, I think it's really actually quite easy to get used to, especially if you're working with a larger hook like this. So um, keep going all the way to the end. Uh, like any crochet project, the first couple of rows feels flimsy. And you may be thinking, you know, this feels weird. It's, you know, doesn't have that same feel as, um, you know, working with worsted weight yarn. But just stick with it and uh, you will see like right there, I started to get caught on some of those threads and I, I felt it. You'll, you'll learn how to feel for that. And so then I just adjust ever so slightly and then I pull through and I'm all set. So, and you'll, you'll get used to it as well. And, and the, um, the rewards for learning how to crochet with this yarn are great because you end up with a fabric that is just so delicate and so just delightful <laughs> to, to wear and to feel and touch. So stick with it. And um, I'll meet you at the end and show you how we begin the third row. All right, so I've finished all my double crochets. And actually, this is what I just finished here is uh, technically row one, all these double crochets. And um, this is a pattern with a four row repeat. And let's take a look at that. So this is our pattern and we're going to be creating these big fans. Um, we have three rows of making the fans and then we have a row of all double crochets. So let's just zoom in on the first row or actually rather the, the second row here. 
So what we're going to do to start off the row, we're going to chain three and do two double crochets into that first stitch. Um, and then we're going to chain two. We're going to skip one, two, three stitches and we're going to do a single crochet uh, in the next stitch. Then we're going to chain five. We're going to skip one, two, three stitches and single crochet in the next stitch. Then we're going to chain two. We're going to skip one, two, three stitches and we're going to do five double crochets into the next chain. And then we chain two, skip one, two, three stitches, single crochet in the next stitch, and then the pattern repeats. So let's give that a try here. And you, you go all the way to the end, and at the end, um, after one of these chain fives, you're going to single crochet, chain two, and then do three double crochets in the very last stitch. So let's give that a shot here. All right, so here I am at the end of row one, and I'm going to chain three. One, two, three, and I'm going to turn my work. So um, this right here is the first stitch and I'm going to do two double crochets right into that first stitch. One, two. And something I like to do that makes it easier for me to read a pattern is um, when there's, when I'm reading a chart, what I like to do is I will color in the stitches where um, uh, that are not being skipped so that I can remember how many stitches to skip in between. And now luckily in this pattern, the skipping is always, you're always skipping three stitches before you do the next stitch. And obviously, it's, it's these double crochets that we're skipping. Okay, so we just did our chain three, two double crochet in the first stitch, so we're gonna skip three, and we're gonna do a single crochet in the double crochet after that. So one, two, three, and uh, before we do that, we're gonna chain two. One, two, one, two, three, and then we're going to double crochet in this next stitch here. Sorry, not double crochet, single crochet. So we go into the stitch under those two V's, yarn over, pull through a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. That's your single crochet. Then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five, skip three stitches, one, two, three, and then single crochet. Chain two. Skip three stitches, one, two, three, and then in this next stitch we're going to do five double crochets. So right into here we're going to do five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to chain two, skip three stitches, one, two, three, and single crochet. Now, I went through that a little weird. There we go. There's our V going underneath there, and single crochet. 
After that, we go back to doing a chain five. skip three stitches one two three and then single crochet in the next one now we're back to our fan the, the base of our fan so we're going to chain two one two skip three stitches one two three and do a five double crochet shell here one two three four five and then chain two so in this row you're always having a chain two before and after the fans and the chain fives and it's always skip three stitches and then you do your single crochet so very quickly, you're going to uh, find this row pretty easy to, to do. Now I just did a fan, so now I know I'm, I'm at a chain five. So I did chain one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then a shell again. So you're just going to do this all the way to the end. One, two, three. And then um, I'll meet you at the end to show you how to do that last stitch. So I just did my last three, sorry, uh, five chain here. And now I'm just going to finish the last set here. It's going to be a chain two and then three double crochets in this last stitch. So chain two, one, two, and in this very last stitch here, right in there, I'm gonna do three double crochets. So it mirrors the other end of our shawl. That's two, and three. All right, so now we're ready to move on to row three. So for row three, we are right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to chain three. And that will count as our first double crochet. Then we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. And then we are going to um, actually, I just noticed an error on this chart here. There's supposed to be a chain one here. Um, although sometimes uh, the chain two can count as a double crochet and then this could be your uh, your single uh, chain. But anyways, um, you're going to chain three and then chain one more. That's your uh, a chain one. Then you're going to double crochet in this double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the third double crochet. Then you're going to chain two and single crochet into the chain five. Chain two and then in the previous shell we're going to do a double crochet, chain one into each of these double crochets. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and so on, all the way to the end of this shell. We're building out our fan. And then we just um, start over again. Chain two, single crochet into the chain five space, and repeat the, the same on the next fan. All the way to the end, and when we get to the end, you should um, be ending here with a single crochet, chain two, and then the double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet into your turning chain here. So let's, let's take a look at that. So we're gonna chain 
three for our double crochet and I'm going to chain one. That's my, my, uh, my chain one in between the double crochets. So this is the first double crochet. So for the next one, I'm going to do a double crochet right into there. Then a chain one. And then a double crochet into this double crochet. Then we're going to chain two. One, two. We're going to single crochet right into that chain five space. One, chain two. And then we're just going to do our double crochet, chain one, in each of these double crochets of this shell right here. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and we finish with just a double crochet. And then we're going to chain two. And then single crochet into that chain five space. Sometimes you might have an extra strand here. In the grand scheme of things, it's not going to make a big difference, so I'm just going to leave it. So now we're going to uh, chain two. One, two. And I'm just going to start all over again. So building out my fan uh, on each of these shells. So I did my chain two, and now we're going to do double crochet, chain one for the first four. Oops. You can see as I'm going, sometimes my hook gets a little just slightly stuck on one of the strands, um, but it's really, really, really not a problem. It's, it's actually pretty fun, I think, working with this yarn. And then just a double crochet in that last double crochet, and then chain two, and single crochet into the chain five space. So you're just going to continue with that all the way for this row. So you can see this row is actually pretty easy and it's it's kind of um, hard to mess it up too because whereas in uh, row two I actually messed it up twice <laughs> um, while you guys weren't watching and um, I had to go back and start over because there's no places that stand out but here it's like you know when you're at the fan, you know what to do. And when you're at the chain five, you know what to do. So I will meet you at the end of this row. And make sure you don't miss, the one thing that you could mess up on this row would be missing this last double crochet. Because sometimes that, um, the space there for that stitch can be a little small that you might miss it. So just make sure you're counting, keeping track chain two. All right, I'll meet you at the end of this row. Okay, so here I am at the end of the row. I'm right here. I've just done my single crochet into this chain five space. And now what I'm going to do is chain two and then just do basically this half fan here. So we chain two, we're going to do a double crochet 
chain one into the first two and then a double crochet into our third double crochet which is really a, a turning chain three so yarn over go into that first double crochet double crochet one chain one double crochet chain one and then right into this third chain here I'm going to do the final double crochet And that is row two, sorry, row three completed. So now let's take a look at row four. So here we are, and what we're going to be doing um, is, and it looks like when I made this chart, um, I made it so that your so that a chain two is a um, is counts as your double crochet because in this in row four what we're doing is we're adding to our fans again but instead of having a chain one in between each of the double crochets we're going to have a chain two in between each of the double crochets. When we get to this spot here, we're not going to be connecting to row three. We're just going to go right into the next fan. So this is actually a really easy row as well. So if you, if you crochet really tightly, you could add another chain in here. So chain three for your first double crochet and then chain two. So for a total of chain five. Or if you crochet more loosely like I do, you could do just a chain four, um, the first two being your double crochet and the second two being your, um, your chain two. So let's try it that way. So we're going to chain two for the double crochet, or you might chain three. And then we're going to chain two for our chain two. I'm going to turn the work. And then just basically in every double crochet, I'm going to do a double crochet. And between those double crochets, we're going to have a chain two. We go to our next double crochet here. That's this one right here. And I'm going to do another double crochet. And now we're going to just move right on over to the next fan right here. Okay. So we were working on this fan. Now we just skip right over all of this. All of this area here where your chain five is. You're just going to skip right over that no chains in between the fans at this point and we're just going to start our double crochet chain two double crochet chain two double crochet chain two double crochet chain two and then double crochet and then we begin our next fan and there's no chain in between the fans on this row. All right, it just goes from one double crochet to the next. So let's let's do that. And now the thing to make sure that you the place where you could potentially um, mess up on this row is as you're coming along this fan and you see this guy here. It's, it kind of can look like these other fans, uh, sorry, these other double crochets, and you might be tempted to make a double crochet in here. So just, you know, keep track that you're only 
making your fan for those five double crochets. And also on this place right here too, that you don't start the fan here in this, uh, this chain five. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the next double crochet and I'm gonna do a double crochet chain two then a double crochet into the next one whoops chain two and a double crochet and you can see as I'm working with this um, plied yarn that occasionally there's a little catch but it's it gets to the point where it's like it's so um, your hands actually just feel it and it's not a problem you get so used to it and it's it's really not a problem at all and as I mentioned earlier so so that's our that's our fan one, two, three, four, five. So you, in the beginning, you can kind of check and you can see this is where these two double crochets, one, two, where they, they're just connected to each other because <clears throat> they're next to each other. It looks like there's a connection, but it's just one right after the other. And we're going to do the same thing again on this next fan. So we skip over this whole chain five area. And we're gonna just go right to our next fan, this next five double crochet fan. We're gonna go into this one here. Double crochet, so you can see those two, they just, they're just connected because they're next to each other. Then chain two and double crochet chain two and as I was saying before about working with this kind of yarn um, it's well worth working with it and just getting used to it taking a little bit of time to get used to it it's really it's really not that hard I thought it was kind of like a fun challenge to learn it and um, so just going to do that all the way across and I will meet you at the end for the last, the last uh, half fan at the other end. And I just wanted to reiterate one more time to make sure that you don't go in here thinking that this is the first double crochet of your fan. Always make sure that you look at it when you're first starting out. Um, on this pattern you'll get you'll quickly get used to looking for this but um, just make sure that you're not treating this chain five as your first double crochet of this fan your fan is just these five double crochets here so as long as you're really thinking about it you won't miss it and if you do you can just obviously go back and fix it so just keep an eye out for that I wanted to show you one other little trick. Um, when you're going into the next stitch, sometimes it's a, the stitch itself feels a little closed up. So something I like to do is I just kind of open it up by pulling at it a little bit like that. And then it makes the opening for that next stitch very easy to go into. Chain two. I'll just show you that one more time. So I'll just take it and I, I just kind of open it up like that and then it makes it easy to go to know exactly where I'm going into. And then this one I just kind of open it up a little.
So here we are at the end of row four, and we're just going to finish up by finishing up this little last half fan here at the end. So we've got our second to last, our, our last full fan done, one, two, three, four, five. And by the way, if, if you wanted to on a row like this, sometimes when I have um, a pattern, I'll have like a little kind of a mantra going on in my head. So I might say like um, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five. And then I know when I get to five that I'm going to be starting another one. So for this last fan, it's just going to be um, uh, just three. So as you can see here, we've this is the last stitch I'm I'm on, and we're going to do just a half fan. So double crochet chain two, double crochet, or actually we're down here, and then we're going to do a double crochet into our, oops, sorry about that, sorry, we're down at this end, uh, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, and then double crochet um, into your turning chain. So if you're doing your, <clears throat> your double crochets as chain twos, You'll do it into the second chain. If you're doing your double crochets as chain threes, you'll go into that third. So on mine here, I put this blue background here so that you could see the progress um, more easily. All right, so I'm gonna go into this first double crochet. And again, I like to Pull this open and I'll just show you before we go there. I'm going to be going into the third chain because I did a I did a chain four in row three. You could choose to do a chain three. Um, so one, two, three, and this little guy right there is the fourth chain. I'm not going to be going in there. I'm just opening that up a little. I'll be going into this third chain right here. So the first one, double crochet, chain two, and again, open that up, makes it easier to see where you go in, you can see the V on top. Double crochet, chain two. And then I'm gonna go into this third turning chain here for my last double crochet. And that is row four completed. And you can see that um, what's kind of cool about it is this is a chain five here and these two are chain twos but they have this um, they make this five piece fan extended on both sides and they kind of start to cross. So that's what's really cool about this pattern. All right, so let's move on to row five. Okay, so we just finished row four, and now we're ready to begin row five. And row five is actually just basically starting over again with row one. But it has its own row number because <clears throat> You have to know how to put these double crochets into your fans. So it's not just a simple repeating of row one, it is its own row, row five. But that is the whole pattern, is you have three rows for, the, for creating the fans, 
and then you have a row of all double crochets and then th three rows of creating the fans and then a row of double crochet so it's a four row repeat so for this row and then so once you finish row five um, we'll be moving on to row six which is basically the same as row two you have the same uh, setup where um, you're you're skipping three stitches in between each of these uh, beginning of fans and these uh, chain fives but we'll get to that in a moment so for row five let's um, Let's start that, let's just read through this. We're gonna do a chain three, that uh, counts as our first double crochet. Then we're going to double crochet into every chain two space. So we do two double crochets into every two chain space, or chain two space. Then we do a double crochet into each of the the three center, the three center uh, double crochets of your fan. Okay, so each fan is made up of one, two, three, four, five, five lines in this fan. <clears throat> and the center, the middle three of them, we will be double crocheting into those. So for this half fan, that means just these two. So our chain three is our first double crochet into this last double crochet. Then we do two double crochets into the chain two space, a double crochet into this double crochet, then double cro two double crochets into this chain two space. And then when we get to this point here where we have the fifth and the first double crochet connecting together, Okay, so that's, that's this point right here. It's also right here. And right here. Into that, you're just gonna go right under that space there, and you're gonna do just one double crochet. And that's what's gonna keep the, um, this uh, this wave, this uh, ripple going, because it essentially um, it's kind of um, like a, a decrease there for for a moment. All right, so then when we get to the next fan. The, the pattern is you're going to double two double crochets into every chain two space. The three double crochets in the center of your fan will each get a double crochet into them. Again, two double crochets into each chain two space. And then when we get back over here again, where we have the fifth double crochet and the first double crochet of this fan and this fan, we're gonna do just one double crochet in that spot right there, which is right here, okay? So these are the, the five double crochets of our fan. So let me turn this work here. So this is our half fan. We've got one, two, three double crochets. Here's our next fan. We have one, two, three, four, five. Here's the next fan. One, two, three, four, five. So in these center three, 
they always get a double crochet into them in each of the chain two spaces we get two double crochets and then where one fan meets the next fan we get one double crochet in there all right so let's let's do that together okay so i always like to do my chain three before i turn so i'm going to chain one two three turn my work so that's my first chain three right there and and immediately I'm and that corresponds with this double crochet and immediately I come to a chain two space so what do we do in the chain two space we do two double crochets so that's one and two then I come to this next double crochet right here I'm going to do a double crochet into that one right here and as I showed you before sometimes to make the opening a little easier to see I just kind of pull on it and it becomes very easy to go into that stitch okay here's another chain two space so I'm going to do two double crochets one two and now here I am where our first half fan our half fan meets our first full fan and in that space right here I'm just going to go right under there this is the last double crochet of the half fan this is the first double crochet of the next full fan I'm going to go right between those two and do a double crochet so yarn over go between those two Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, see that? So now we have the rest of this full fan, so I'm going to do two double crochets in here, a double crochet into this, two double crochets, double crochet into this stitch, two double crochets into the space, a double crochet here, two double crochets into this space and then here we are again where one fan the end of this fan meets the beginning of this fan and I will do one double crochet in there so one two and then a double crochet into this one And then one, two, one, two, and then a double crochet into this one. And then one, two, And a double crochet into this third center double crochet of the fan okay so it's it's technically the fourth double crochet of this of this fan one two three four I'm gonna do two more double crochets into this chain two space And now I'm at the last double crochet of this fan where it meets the first double crochet of the next fan. And so right in between there, I'm going to do one double crochet, just like right here. Okay. Yarn over, go into that space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then I'm just going to do that 
all over again on the next fan. We've got one, two, three, four, five double crochets in that next fan. So this one corresponds to the last and first of each of those two fans. And now I'm going to start with my chain two space doing two double crochets. I'm at my second double crochet or the first of these three centered ones, however you want to look at it. Two double crochets in the next space. Double crochet in that third double crochet. Two double crochets into that chain two space double crochet into the fourth double crochet, two double crochets into this last chain two space of the fan. And now I'm back to where I'm back to where this fan is meeting the next fan. So now we're just going to do one double crochet in there. So you'll just continue with that um, all the way to the end. And then when you get to the end, you just finish out the last half of your, uh, your half fan here at the end, the same way as on this end. It's going to be a, the mirror image. You're going to have this one double crochet in between where the, the last full fan and the last half fan meet. Two double crochets into the chain two space. One double crochet into this second double crochet of your half fan. Two double crochets into the chain two space. And then one double crochet into either your uh, into your third chain of your chain. You, you're either going to have a chain four or a chain five here, depending on uh, which you chose. Um, some people like to do chain three for a half, for a double crochet. Some people like to do a chain two, depending on how loosely or tight you crochet. And when we get to this point here, I will show you how to do row six, which is essentially a repeat of row two. Just instead of working into chains, you're now working into double crochets, but the formula is the same where you skip three in between each time you work into the row below. So we'll, we'll get to that when we get there. I'll meet you next at the end for finishing up this, um, this last fan here. Your next row is to repeat row two again. Work this pattern repeating rows two through five until your shawl is the desired size. You can end on any row that you like best. I ended mine on a row four to make lacing easiest. Now let's take a look at the finished shawl and several different ways to style it. Hello everybody. The Ocean Wave shawl is completed. And as you can see, I have it laced up the front here to make it into sort of a bit of a ruana. And let me show you how it looks. So um, the lacing is done with this very simple chained cord. And I just made these tiny little tassels on the end. And I've just laced it like you would lace a shoe through the holes of the 
shawl and then at the end just tie a little bow and it can be worn like this or it can be worn on the side shawl in the front and the lacing in the back. Like this. And if you want, you can kind of pull some of it up and behind you if you want to shorten it up a little bit. So this is the Ocean Waves shawl, and I'm going to show you some other ways how to style it without the lacing cord. So here's the Ocean Waves shawl. You can wear it as a simple ruana, just laying over your shoulders. You could put a pin in the middle. You could wrap it like a regular shawl where you have these um, two nice points coming down. Another way you can wear it is just simply like a scarf around your neck. Feel free to play around with how you wrap this. Another way is to create this little, uh, little flower. Uh, you can wrap it around your neck like a scarf, or here's a really cool way. You have it wrapped around, and then you create these little angel wings that go in the front and the back. That's one of my favorites. This way um, is another favorite of mine where you just lay it over your shoulders. Um, of course, you can also take the ends and pull those to the front. You can either leave them out like that, or you can tuck them in. Isn't that pretty? Here's another cool way, you kind of do this thing, and um, you're gonna have two points in the front and two points in the back. You crisscross it, and you can use a pin to secure it, or just Wear it as is. It will hold. I really like this um, crisscrossing effect. Now you can also take the crisscross and have it in the front. So you have these two points in the front. This is a cool way to do it. You can take it and fold it in half and kind of double it over. Put a little shawl pin there. You can also um, fold over the top, one of the top edges, wrap that around you, and it's kind of a shortened version of a ruana or a, a wrap. I like this way a lot too, especially depending on the colors. You can wrap it around your neck, put a little shawl pin there. There's so many different ways that you can style this. And here is the lacing cord. For lacing, what you're going to do is um, take the ends and you're going to count the same holes all the way up. And I believe I went up like about 15 holes on mine and then you're just going to feed your lacing cord through get the ends even and then just start lacing it just like you would lace up a shoe you just crisscross it and then go into the other hole on the other side so that's the ocean wave shawl thank you so much for joining today if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up 
If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I have videos coming out each week. If you liked it, please share it and uh, hope to see you again next week. Thanks for joining.